Good morning, YouTube. I greet you in the peace of the Lord. Um, it's Brother Francois Campbell in Christ. It is 4.37 a.m. on January the 31st. I just had a prophetic dream and I wanted to share it while it was still fresh in my head. Um, about this end times issues. Um, so last night before I went to bed I decided that I wasn't going to pray but I was going to speak to God in my heart and in my heart I was saying to the Lord like what is really going on like in terms of this coronavirus in terms of living in the end times, I mean, Lord, we're always having signs. And we're always having dreams and visions about what's coming and nothing much never really happens, but we do get dreams and visions from you and even in myself, I was wondering, I was asking the Lord, like, am I pleasing you? Did I... Am I going to stray from your messages? Am I not teaching what you've taught me? Am I making any mistakes? I was just crying out to the Lord in my heart and I expected a reply, I expected an answer. But I didn't expect to have a kind of dream like this one, or vision I should say. So... I'm going to share with you guys what I saw and hopefully you guys can seek the Lord for understanding and revelation and just know that this is the time to take the Lord serious. If you know Jesus, stay close to him. If you don't know him, ask him to come into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior to forgive you for your sins. Ask him to write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life and give you the power of the Holy Spirit to prepare you for the return of the rapture of the church. So anyway, brothers and sisters, this is what happened. I was aware that I was in Northwest, I believe maybe 10. I was on the motorway at Monts Park in a car driving I was with a friend of mine actually I was with my friend's wife now before you start judging me she's also a sister in Christ and so is he we've known them for years we've known each other for years and um, thus we just have a loving relationship we're all like family so I'm with my friend's wife and we was driving. I believe she was taking me to do my driving test. But I'm not sure. Anyway, so we're driving and we got to Mons Park outside where they call it AIDS Cafe heading towards um, the little junction where you get to turn right to go house, then or turn left to go Wembley. We then realized that we got caught up in a lot of traffic. But we're driving and we're talking and we're going through the cars in the traffic and we're not realizing that no one is in their cars. All these cars are just parked up and abandoned. So we got stuck in the middle of the traffic under a bridge. So Whatever conversation we had changed to, oh, we should have stayed on the left-hand side next to um, Stonebridge Park Station. Or no, we should have went straight across. We should have turned off at um, Ace Caf and went through Park Royal. And all this debate, 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 we actually got stuck in the middle of the traffic underneath the bridge. And then we noticed that no one wasn't in their cars. And that's when we was that wait. Something's wrong. I'm not saying that we missed the rapture. I'm not saying I don't believe that's what it was. 
I believe that something happened to cause everybody to make a big migration and because of the amount of people travelling the traffic got blocked up and people abandoned their cars at first I thought people abandoned their cars I later got to realise that these cars wasn't even working there was one and two cars working that I believed I'm not sure how but they was working because on the other side of the road not going the opposite direction to us because everybody was going the same way but on the other side of the road there was a few cars that drove up saw the traffic made a u-turn and others tried to force their way through wouldn't work and they made a u-turn so anyway we came out of the car we started walking and for miles and miles and miles we then realized that no one's in their cars, their car's broken and how I knew the cars was broken because I said to her like we can't keep walking this is too far okay so I brought my way into a car I was trying to hot wire it, the car's dead another car, car's dead so I was like this has changed so we started walking anyway we then got to a point where it became night so we needed some kind of a shelter so we made refuge in some kind of old abandoned building still couldn't find nobody anywhere except one or two people running around in panic in a hurry to try to get somewhere um, it became the next day and for some reason my sister was with us so I was saying to them, look, I'm hungry. If it's even a fried egg, I want something to eat. I remember where we left our car. Well, my friend's car. There was a frying pan on the side of the road. If I can get an egg or something and start a fire, I'm frying an egg sandwich. And they said I know something was off. Because my sister and my friend's wife was both telling me, no, it's too dangerous. Don't go out there. You might not make it back. They start that, and I'm saying, look, i got God, the Lord is with me. I can go anywhere, anytime, I will be fine. Mm. Excuse me. So I decided I was going to go. Uh, I went, I made, I found a pot, I fried the egg. Then I went back. Because I wanted to tell them, like, told you I'll be okay, I got the egg. But I was like, oh, I left the egg. So I went back again get the egg I realized someone had eaten it so anyway I decided that to go back is gonna take a while so I'm gonna take a shortcut and for this I was running for some weird reason I was actually running at the speed of motorbikes because that's what was moving people on motorbikes and people on, on back pedal bikes and um, I got to a point where I was actually running parallel to motorbikes. I got to a small group of maybe about 10 people. And this is how I now knew again something was very off. Because the police, there was two police, there was a policewoman and a policeman. And they was actually congregating with criminals. Instead of chasing them to arrest them, it was like they were trying to survive together because of whatever had happened. This took a little of my time. No one really knew what to tell me about what happened. All they knew was things was different on earth. So upon leaving them now to continue to make it back, walking on top of cars, walking, trying to get back to where I was with my friend and my sister. So I know that's the way the police and the criminals were. And um, I got back to them and they was like, look, we can't keep staying here. There's a friend that I went to school with. Um, she must have, she must have, um, live, she must live somewhere around here. So we're gonna, I'm going to go find her house. So we all decided to move location. 
they went to find his friend's house because he was living, he was just listening rough. And we knew in our spirits that even though we was okay right now, it wasn't safe, we couldn't continue to live like this. So what had happened was, we was traveling now, um, we then found this friend's house, but it was abandoned. And there was one person there, which was, I believe, to be her friend, but her parents, everybody was gone. And this girl was crying hysterically. And she was crying, and she was crying, and she was crying. So my friend who knew her, going to comfort her and ask her, you know, like, why are you crying? What's wrong? It's okay. It's okay. You're not alone anymore. We're here. We're here. We're going to all help each other to figure this out. And she was crying and she was crying and she was like, and this is ex this is specifically what she said to me before before what she said before I woke up. She said, "My mom and dad had went to Jamaica, but because of social media." Everybody's speaking about the coronavirus and having like a pandemic, like everybody was just panicking and just so worried and so scared that the government of Jamaica decided to shut down social media. I can't tell you if it was only Jamaica or if it was across the world. But basically she was crying because she said I can't get into contact with them anymore. I don't know if they're okay. I don't know if they're safe. I don't know if they're infected. I don't know if they're dead. This was her problem. She said the government has shut down social media. And it was at that point where in my spirit, in the dream, it was like, is this why everybody was migrating to one direction? Was we all heading to the airports? Why would... My brain just flooded with all oh my days. And then I woke up. That's what I saw, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm not going to add nothing more. I'm not subtracting anything. I'm just asking you to seek the Lord, to trust him. I ask for direction, you know, and I'm really hoping and praying that this isn't actually the times where the Bible talks about plagues, because there's plagues of locusts right now, there's famine here and there, um, the Bible says a lot about a lot of things in terms of the end times, but you know, we've had hurricanes, we've had tornadoes, we've had floods, we've had a lot of things. I'm beginning to wonder in my spirit if this is actually the time period where things get from so bad to worse where every country is desolate. I mean, Jamaica used to be a land of God. Now it's a land of only the Creator gets acknowledgement. No one speaks about Jesus anymore. Um, it's predominantly Rastafarian where Rastafarian didn't used to get no respect back in the day. I mean, I know if you see clubs in Jamaica, the way they party, but it's basically Sodom and Gomorrah. The music is about murder, killing, and sex. Um, there's a lot of link to Haitians, which is a voodoo island. Um, so I don't know, brothers and sisters. Let us pray for the Lord's protection over us and our families and our loved ones. And um, I will say this though, in that dream, it doesn't feel much far from where we are right now. Those of you who know the coronavirus has only been out, what, like a month? Literally, it's the 31st of January now, it's literally been like a month. They said that it's been to Jamaica, the government is saying that it's not. So I believe it's a cover-up. 
because we've got a lot of Chinese in Jamaica who I believe probably went home to China for the Chinese New Year. And when this outbreak happened on the quarantine, they rushed back to Jamaica in the Britain, Britain, where I'm, where I'm living right now, in London. We, we, we have basically a, a Chinese nail shop on every strip, on every corner. And then the odd Chinese restaurant, another strip on every corner. Someone somewhere had to have gone back to China for the Chinese New Year. And I don't know. Sorry, because sirens. I live very close to a police station. Well, close enough to every time something happens, I can hear them. Brothers and sisters, seek the Lord. Please put your trust in Jesus Christ. And have faith, because the Bible says that. 10,000 shall fall on the left and 1,000 shall fall on the right, but it shall not come nigh us. So may God bless us and protect us and guide us in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Thank you for listening. Please share. If you have an understanding that I don't, please message me. I do remember maybe three, four years ago I dreamt that I was in Wembley and all of the phones went off there was like a frog popped up on the phone a little green frog and everybody's electronic device iPhones, Samsung's tablets, computers everything went down I mean they control the satellites so they do have power to do this and if you're aware of what happens in carnivals they turn off the phone signal or they block connection I don't know but you cannot call no one if they don't want you to because they believe that gang members meet up in different, different locations in Carnival, phone each other, and then they leave and meet up. So once you get to that location of Labrick Grove, your phone wouldn't be able to make phone calls. They'd done it about two years ago. May God bless you and keep you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.